Hey everyone, what's up? It's good to see you. My name is Caleb. This is a channel called Theophile. Here we talk about books that talk about God and we talk about them kindly. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I'm going to start a new series where I summarize and review Paul and the Gift, or PAG for short, by John Barclay. And this video series is going to have three parts, just like they all do. First, I will give background and summary about the author and the text. Then I will summarize each chapter, just walking through it. Then finally, I'll give you my personal opinions and review of the text, just in case anyone cares. Okay, here we go. So first of all, who is John Barclay? Well, he holds the Lightfoot Chair of Divinity faculty position at Durham University, which a lot of people consider maybe the most important faculty position, the most prestigious faculty position for New Testament professorships, for early church Christianity uh, professorships. In some sense, he has the most important Bible teaching position on the planet, the most prestigious Bible teaching position on the planet. And where did this book come from? Well, John Barclay had been publishing in the field for a long time, a lot of works, big and small articles about Romans and Galatians. I think he did some things on Josephus. But this is the first big monograph that has really made waves and will last for a lot of generations. And this book is, you may have heard it referred to as the biblical scholars, biblical scholars textbook. In other words, when you ask a bunch of biblical scholars, what is the book you guys really look up to and has blown your mind and you really want to write a book like that? This is the book biblical scholars point to. Uh, for example, there's a podcast called On Script, which I highly recommend. And on On Script, they, uh, they interview biblical scholars and they ask them, what are you reading and writing and working on? And they always ask, what is the most important piece of biblical scholarship in the last 50 years? And 65, 75% of the scholars have said Paul and the Gift is the most important work in the last 50 years. So not only does he have the most important Bible teaching position on the planet, but most biblical scholars say he's written the most important book on the planet. Now, I tell you all that, first of all, just to give you background and to give you some kick to read the book yourself, I think you should pick it up because it is that good, but also because there's kind of a spiritual application at the end of Paul and the Gift, which is unique. Not a lot of academic biblical studies works have spiritual takeaways, but one of the spiritual takeaways of Paul and the Gift is just this simple, beautiful Christian point that it doesn't matter how much glory or honor anyone has in the eyes of the world. When you come into Christ and into the church, the Father gives us all equally and infinitely glory and honor. And John Play Barclay talks about, in some lectures about this book, he talks about how in his local church there are a lot of people with mental handicaps, mental disabilities, and there are some people on the verge of homelessness and have not been educated. And in the eyes of the world, obviously, John Barclay has more glory and honor and worth than all of those people. But when you come into the church, all of that fades away, and John Barclay is seen as just as honorable and valuable and worthy as the people with mental handicaps and the people who are about to lose their homes in the eyes of God. And when John Barclay was making that point in the end of this book and in his lectures, I really got teary-eyed. And I don't get teary-eyed frequently in real life, let alone reading and listening to things about biblical scholarship. But it's just such a beautiful point, and he writes it so well. And it's so ironic that he's making this point about how human glory doesn't matter in the book that is maybe the most valued and glorious on a human level within the field of biblical studies. So then, what is the book about? Well, if I had to answer it real quickly, I guess it, the, the book came about this way. It seems like John Barclay sat down and he said, what have we not written about in the field of Pauline studies? Everything has been written about. There are dissertations on the smallest Pauline words that get repeated. Uh, every rock has been turned over. Every avenue has been explored. But then Barclay noticed, except for the word grace, it's like there's no dissertations that studied what does Paul mean by the word charis, which gets translated grace. There's tons of books about what does Augustine mean by charis, or he spoke Latin, but what does, Paul, what does Augustine mean by grace, or what's the difference between Calvin and the Roman Catholic Church in grace? But what does Paul mean when Paul uses the word charis, which we translate as grace? There hasn't been a really big monograph on that, at least not one recently. And so that's kind of why Barclay wrote this book. And notice it's called Paul and the Gift, not Paul and and grace, because one of the big points Barclay makes from the very beginning is that charis should just be translated with the idea of gift or present. When we import the idea of grace, it kind of comes with theological or religious strings attached. But remember, the New Testament writers wrote with very plain English. They weren't speaking in theological jargon. When they talk about the gift of God, they're just talking about a present. God has given us the present of salvation. The Father has given us the present of the Son, and the present of the Spirit, and the present of 
of the church. God has given us presence. And we can translate that grace and get into kind of mystical, mythic, theological language. But God has just given us presence. And so what does Paul mean when he talks about the presence of God? the gifts of God. That's what it's about. It's kind of a word study. But then the word study of Charis does have an upshot, which ends up trying to unite or split the difference between the old perspective on Paul and the new perspective on Paul. And so the reason why this book is kind of hailed as the king is because it settles some old feuds or maybe some recent feuds, but they feel like they're old because they've just been going on forever. The old perspective and new perspective have been fighting about a lot of different definitional things. And I plan to make some videos about that actually. But Bar, Bar Clay ends up saying, I think I can take the best of both worlds and create a theology of grace within Paul right down the middle. Now, I actually am one of the interpreters, uh, along with a lot of scholars, who think that in Paul and the Gift, Barclay actually ends up arguing for an old perspective definition of grace. It's just expanded and augmented a lot with some new insights from the new perspective. But fundamentally, he's on the old perspective side of the fence. Barclay himself would say he's right down the middle, and I guess he knows his book better than the interpreters, but some interpreters of whom I am one think he's officially old perspective, but with some very expanded categories. Now, what is the structure of the book? Well, section one is chapters one through four. And in those four chapters, he just zooms out as big as possible. And he talks about how in soci sociological terms do we talk about presence and do we talk about gifts? Because remember, grace is just a gift of God. And he talks about how in different cultures, we have different assumptions about how presence and gifts work and how if you come to the Bible with an assumed vision of what gifts look like, you might read that on to the gift of Jesus or the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now you're kind of distorting what Paul meant because you came with your own idea of how presents work and you're putting it on the present of Jesus. And then um, he goes throughout church history and looks at how different people throughout church history have had different assumptions of what grace or gifts or how gifts work in culture. And then in section two, which is chapters five through 10, he zooms into second temple Judaism uh, into some of the documents just before the time of Paul. He looks at five documents in particular, the wisdom of Solomon, Solomon, Philo of Alexandria. He looks at a pseudo-Philo document uh, called the Antiquitium Biblicarum, which I certainly mispronounced. He looks at Fourth Ezra and a text from the Qumran community. And he looks at all of those five documents and he says, how did those Second Temple Jews talk about the gifts of God? So now he's talking about gifts in a specifically theological sense. How did those Jews in Paul's day talk about God giving gifts to humanity and gifts to Israel? Because that forms the specific context in which Paul wrote about his vision of gifts. And then section three is chapters 11 through 17, where he has a running commentary of Galatians and then Romans, where he zeroes in on uh, the charis word group and the idea of God giving us gifts and the gift of salvation. Then chapter 18 is the conclusion. And that's where he ties it all together and shows how this word study of the idea of gift or grace really can help us uh, divide a, find a middle path between the new and old perspective. The book is 574 pages long with a seven page appendix. It was published in 2015 by Erdman's Press. And I hope this general introduction was helpful for you. In the next video, I'm going to get into it and start just summarizing the chapters. But if all you want is a general introduction to the most important book about biblical studies on the planet written by the guy with the most important job on the planet, well, that's your introduction for you. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you want a link to Paul and the Gift, I have that in the description for cheap. You can get it cheap if you click on the link. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for the channel, write it in the comments. I'll read it and take it to heart. Once again, I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. See you in the next one.